Hey guys, Nate here with New View Trust Company and today we're going to talk about five considerations you should make before doing a Roth conversion. First, what is a Roth conversion? Simply put, it's when you decide you want to take money from a pre-taxed account like a traditional IRA or a SEP IRA and pay taxes on that to convert it to a Roth IRA. The reason for doing that is that you're ripping the Band-Aid off and paying the taxes now versus paying it later. And there's a lot of benefits to a Roth IRA which we talk about in other segments. Now let's talk about five things you should consider before doing a Roth conversion. Number one, cost. What's it going to cost you? When you do a conversion from say a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, you're gonna get that converted amount uh, reported on a 1099 that you get in the following January. How you treat that is you treat that amount as normal income. Add it to your adjusted gross income, you pay normal income tax on it. So the first question you wanna ask yourself is the amount that I convert, can I afford to pay the taxes on that when it comes to tax time? Number two, what do you think your tax bracket will be in the future? Now a lot of us don't have a crystal ball and it depends on how far you're trying to look in advance, but some people consider, well, if I'm making less money now and I plan to make more money later, I'll be in a higher tax bracket. So oftentimes, depending on your current tax situation, you may want to do a Roth conversion because you're in a lower income or lower income tax bracket. But if you're in a higher income tax bracket, that may change things. Number three, recovery period. This is a big one. You have to decide where your break even point is from the taxes you paid to convert from the investments now in my Roth IRA. When am I going to see the break even point when it comes to my tax free growth? This is important when it comes to your investment because you have to decide where your break even point is from the amount of taxes you paid to get the tax free growth and how long that will take you. Some investments take very quick to hit that recovery period. But if you're invested in something like a CD or I, like I like to say, a certificate of depression, you may never see the recovery period. So it might not make sense, but that's not because the conversion doesn't make sense. It's because the investment doesn't make sense. Number four, what's the investment? This is the biggest consideration that you should make in my mind. Here's the deal. Depending on what your investment is and how much profit you're going to have and how much time you have to make profit, that's the ultimate decision as to whether to pay tax now or pay tax later. If you're very conservative with your investments and you want to make contributions to a traditional or SEP and the deductions outweigh your tax-free profit, then this story changes for you. But if you're putting small amounts of money in or your investments are gaining large returns, then the tax-free growth is much more beneficial. So the ultimate decision maker that outweighs all the other ones is what is the investment. I've seen real estate investors take a small amount of money, buy a rental property or buy a fix and flip and flip it in eight weeks and make 40% profit. If the investment's something like that, it makes sense to convert because your break even point that the fact that you paid the taxes, you outweigh that in the first eight weeks and everything past that point is ching ching, ching ching, ching ching. And number five, the last one, generational wealth. Remember that when you pass away, your IRAs, whether it's a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, are passed to your beneficiaries. There's a tremendous amount of power in passing on tax-free wealth to your next generation. Imagine having real estate or rental properties, income producing properties, income producing notes within a Roth IRA that when you pass and you've still got those assets within that account, that account doesn't go away. It changes into an inherited Roth IRA and those assets continue to grow at least for another 10 years, completely tax free to your next generation. So not only do you get the ability to live tax free and penalty free off the income generated in your Roth IRA from 59 and a half on, but when you die, your inheritance, your beneficiaries also get to live tax free through an inherited Roth IRA. So before making that consideration on a Roth conversion, uh, take those considerations into effect. And I hope you enjoyed this education. If you want more education, continue to like us on Facebook, continue to follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website, www.newviewtrust.com.